Vanakkam, namaste and blessings to everyone. This is Dr. Bhairavi Bala Subramaniam, PhD, the Sky Priestess. So today I wanted to give you a little bit of heads up as to some key alignments we are going to be seeing between today and the 6th of September. Whilst I go into a lot more depth as part of the work that I share in the Tier 23 program, if there's something really important, I will, of course, be sharing it through this public channel. So what I'm just going to touch on are the most, most key, central, important alignments that we need to talk about. Okay. So first of all, let's just look at today, August the 30th. We see the Venus-Pluto opposition and we see the Mercury-Neptune opposition. These are energies that are very challenging in their own ways. They're bringing up a lot of density, a lot of shadow, especially in the questions we ask of our personal lives, our professional lives, and the relationships that sustain those different spheres of existence. So it's really a good time for us to be looking at what are the types of shadow elements and elements of challenge which we need to acknowledge in order that they may be transmuted. The Mercury-Neptune opposition, on the other hand, in Virgo Pisces, is the kind of energy that gives us the opportunity to really fine tune and look at the key details to help us become aware of what is not clear to us, what is obscured to us, what is not immediately visible or intelligible. It's actually an excellent time for people who are intuitives, mystics, channelers, artists, dreamers, to really sit down and allow spirit to flow with them. But for that to happen in a sustainable way and in a way that does not lead a person getting hijacked, you've got to make sure you've got the groundedness, discernment and clarity so that you have the space, you have the tool, you have the room to process. So that's what's happening today. And I'm just going on the really, really important bits. August 31st, we're going to be seeing the sun at 8 Virgo in conjunct Chiron at 8 degrees Aries. Lots of health concerns can come up, especially if anyone has issues with the gut, uh, mental health, or literally anything physical that can be above the head. So if you have something coming up, don't ignore it. Get it checked out. That's not to put you into a state of fear, but it's to put you into a state of readiness and responsiveness. Anyone with points near eight degrees Scorpio and or Aquarius will experience this as a yod or a finger of fate, which can push you to really, really need to press, put, the, put, no, put your foot down on the pedal and make a very strong karmic decision with respect to how you process your own vulnerabilities and your own fears and anxieties or awareness of what you need to do to bring yourself into greater alignment with your physical and mental and digestive health. The ancients understood that digestive health was intimately linked to mental health. The Indians got it, the Chinese got it, other cultures probably also got it. Now Western medicine has caught up and is going, we have discovered this and the rest of us are just like, been saying this a long time, man, <laughs> you know. But getting into the habit of eating more biotically friendly foods and in the long term will benefit just about anyone unless you have very specific sensitivities. September the 1st, there's a lot going on. But what I really want to talk about on September the 1st is the fact that we have another yod or a finger of fate. You won't find this information elsewhere between the main node at 25 degrees Gemini, sextile Therius the hunter stalker at 25 degrees Leo, and it comes down as a yod with the yod point at 25 degrees of Capricorn, which is of course where Saturn is. So we're having a yod or a finger of fate with Saturn, the north node and Therius. This is a big deal. Big, 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 big deal. So what this also means is that Therios is trying the south node in the skies at 25 degrees of Sagittarius, according to the mean calculation. And what this means is that this is a time where collectively we are still needing to look at the predator in our thoughts, in our immediate environment, the ways in which we can create a society that protects not just ourselves as individuals, but those who are vulnerable, those who need to grow, those who need a safe space to express their creative imaginations in the world, whether it's kids, artists, you, me, whatever. 
This is the kind of space where we really collectively need to push for the creation of sustainable and safe structures in society that allow people to heal and express themselves in deep and meaningful ways. But if we just stick to the old ways of knowing and old ways of being and what is also known as the old occult laws, that change is not going to happen. So especially around September 1st, if anyone is coming at you with that, I know more than you, I'm going to lord it over you, or I've learned more than you, you don't know anything, you're a moron, whatever type of vibration that comes at you that way, it's probably got something parasitic associated with it. Now, some people are going to feel that way, even if someone isn't lauding information. And that's, that's a projection issue. But sometimes you do meet people who take information and the ability to present information and they use it in negative ways. A lot of astrologers do this. They put fear in your head instead of giving you hope. Now, of course, there's some brilliant people who don't do that. But there's a lot of clients I see who basically like carry, you know, so much of fear because someone said, you're never going to get this done or you're never going to achieve this or you're never going to do this. You've got to be very clear with who you let into your headspace especially around this time. On the same day, September the 1st, we see Venus at 24 degrees Cancer, squared Black Moon Lilith and Eris at 24 degrees Aries. So we also see on the same day, Black Moon Lilith conjunct Eris. This is a powerful day for those of us who are working with the archetype of the feminine, especially the feminine that acknowledges that which has been oppressed, that which has been suppressed. And you know my thoughts on this. Those of you who have been following me for long enough. There is a very creative energy that can come out of the transmutation of anger and rage. But that same creativity can be turned into destruction if one is not careful with the way it is processed. There is a great need for rebalancing and reparation. So what has happened to this planet and especially the indigenous who have been the most marginalized and oppressed on this planet. And of course, within those populations, there will be subsections of those populations who are even more oppressed. So they have every absolute right to be standing up for themselves and asking for what is due. But at the same time, taken too far, taken from a place in which that is not accessible at a conscious level, that same energy can turn very destructive. So if you're doing any activism work or engaging people who do this, you need to keep that difference in mind. It's hard to do when you are right in the fray, when you're right in the middle of it, but that is the difference between conscious engagement and activism that is more coming from raw, unprocessed emotion. So on September 1st, we also see Mercury at 22 Virgo, trine Pluto at 22 degrees Capricorn. Again, this is an opportunity for us to fine tune whatever it is that we are working on, whatever it is that we are committed to transmuting and transforming. Look at the details. That's a very important thing in this time. Look at the details. September the 2nd, we see the full moon in Pisces, and I work with universal time. The full moon is at 10 degrees of Pisces, that is sextile Uranus, it is in conjunct Vesta, the priestess, and it is conjunct Nessus, the abuser's asteroid. There's going to be a lot of pain, collective pain, that is going to be unearthed with this full moon. So with this full moon, those of you who have points near 10 degrees Libra and on, 10 degrees, uh, and on 9 degrees Aquarius will experience this as another powerful yod or finger of fate. The full moon in Pisces is going to bring up layers and layers and layers of more deep emotional and psychic processing, especially to do with the, with the roles that people have played. Abuser, facilitator, priestess, transformer, catalyst, and it's time to shake all of it up. So more tenderness is needed at this time. There's a lot of healing that's possible, that there's also a lot of muddying of the waters that can also come about. You need to protect those spaces that need to be healed. This is one of the lessons that Therius has constantly taught us this year. It is not to be indiscriminate about what we share and to whom and how and why. On the same day, September 2nd, we see Venus at 25 degrees Cancer, opposite Saturn at 25 degrees Capricorn. More key decisions are being made at this time. 
The same day also sees the sun at 10 degrees Virgo trine Uranus at 10 degrees Taurus. You may see some significant changes for some of you breakthroughs and for others breakdowns in terms of things that have to do with the material realm, our career, our daily habits. For some of you, it may be a health issue. For some of you, it may be a career issue. But because Uranus is so closely involved, it's very hard to say which way it's going to flow. If you've been following the signs and walking in alignment, generally you should not have anything to worry about. This could be a positive breakthrough. But if there's something that you're not doing and that you know you have to do it, but you've just ignored it, bam, 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 bush. Now, on the same day, we see Mercury at 25 degrees of Virgo squared, the mean nodes, mean south node and mean south node a focus on health, a focus on practicality, discernment, and space. This comes up again during the energy of the Pisces full moon. So there's got to be a balance between that mystical openness and the nuts and bolts of how do I get this done? How do I stay sane? How do I know I'm channeling the right frequency? Keep asking these questions. Do not romanticize. It does not help. September 3rd, we see the energy of Borassi, what I refer to as the false light energy, opposite Mercury at 25 degrees Virgo. It also in conjunct Stereus, the hunter stalker at 25 degrees Leo, which again makes a yod with Saturn. Another possible yod point is 25 degrees of Libra. The Borassi theory is in conjunct and Borassi Mercury opposition is effectively an energy that yet again asks us to be mindful of what eyewash is being presented our way. Too many people believe that they are on the spiritual path because lights appear to them, because things make them feel good about what they are choosing. And sometimes it is a good thing and sometimes it's not. So this is really a day where everyone in this field needs to take a good, long, hard look at what they are doing and whether or not they are coming in alignment from whatever they understand is source energy. Different people have different understandings. Just because someone disagrees with you doesn't mean that they're necessarily false light. But sometimes you just know. You know, it's like the energy it may seem like it's all glowy, but it's just not. So just be very clear about that. On the same day, September 3rd, we see Mercury at 25 Virgo, trine Saturn at 25 Capricorn. Again, an excellent energy, a very practical energy to get things done, to get things moving. We also see on the same day, Venus at 27 degrees Cancer in conjunct the galactic center at 27 degrees Sagittarius with the yacht points at 27 Taurus, Anno Aquarius. So this is a very strong, very powerful energy that yet again asks us to think about what is the path we are walking, what do we understand as home, and how are we connecting those dots at a material level and at an ideational level. So what are the practical resources that we are using to connect the two, and what are the networks or technologies or groups of people that we are using to try to bridge the path in the mind and the path that the spirit calls home. Another big energy. On the same day, September 3rd, we see the sun in Virgo opposite Nessus, the abuser's asteroid at 11 degrees Pisces. More of those layers of healing are coming in. So you're doing several different things at the same time. This is why I'm focusing on this week. Now, just for your information, this is what would be covered in a tier 23 level one analysis. This is the basic analysis. September the 4th, we see Mercury at 23 degrees, 27 degrees Virgo squared the galactic center. More opportunities to heal, learn, and align with what is the part of truth you truly resonate with at this time. Let your gut lead you because your gut actually has a lot more information than you give it credit for. Just because your head might be going, but this looks pretty. Does it, and your gut is going, I don't think so. Listen to your gut. It has a lot more wisdom than we give it credit for. Heck, it's got quite a lot of neurons as well. Um, on the same day, we see Uranus at 10 degrees Taurus, squared Vesta, the priestess at 10 degrees Leo. Please, all of you, all of you who have felt the need to sacrifice your creative expression, your inner child, your love for joy and play in the world in the name of the greater good, cancel that contract. It does not work. 
the world is not going to be a better place if you limit your sense of joy in it. Now, very often we are taught this as an idea as kids. Very often, somehow, someone's put that idea of we if we actually find a little bit of happiness in our lives, you're taking it away from another person. That's not exactly true. So in a day-to-day -day situation, when you feel yourself forcing yourself to shut down, that is where you know you are blocking yourself from that creative, co-creative dynamic that you can have with the cosmos. So that is also something that comes up September 4th. On September 4th, Ixion, the tyrant at 27 degrees Sagittarius, makes aspects to Venus and Mercury on the same day. So there's a lot of heavy hitting, heavy pushing that comes through that particular uh, Venus, Mercury and Mars on the same day. In fact, we see a Venus Mars square as well. But whatever we are doing expects some pushback from people who are challenged by the idea that we are stepping up into our autonomy, into our creative energy, into the ability and the joy we take in walking our own path. Moving on to September 5th, big events, I would say, are Mercury enters Libra. Get a little bit of a break from that. Um, and then we see Saturn in conjunct Therios making a yacht with the North Node in Gemini. It's the same alignment again. Pay attention to the signs in your immediate environment. Pay attention to your headspace, what you are hearing and what you are putting out into the world. And notice those patterns of energetic predation and parasitism. If you are the authority in a space, make a boundary. If there is a different authority in your space, tell them to make a boundary or kick them out because they don't deserve to be an authority. So these are the kinds of energies that are going to come up September 5th. Finally, September the 6th, we see the occultation of Mars by the moon at 28 degrees Aries. And remember, Mars is going to go into a retrograde soon. So this is the last occultation of Mars by the moon, which is basically a mini eclipse kind of. You know, you've got the Earthbound Observer, you've got the moon, and then you've got Mars, which it appears to occult or obscure. So this is another day where we can actually see issues surrounding how we focus our life force, how we bring our passion, our vitality, our physicality into the world, our relationships with the masculine archetype. This is the kind of energy that's going to come up really, really, really strongly and ask you to face it before that retrograde begins. So again, health issues, do not discount it. It will not work in your favor if you ignore it, take it seriously. On the same day, we see a couple of other things, but I'm going to wrap it up with the fact that Venus enters Leo on the same day, finishing its transit through Cancer. So then we can actually find more space to want to creatively and joyfully express what our hearts are saying. Throughout this entire time period, we see a lot of activations of Juno, the soulmate asteroid. Don't get excited yet because some of these activations are ones that yet again bring up very strong shadow dynamics and ask us to be very, very aware of the projection of desire and projection of identity upon soulmate contracts. A lot of people romanticize this because of the way the concept is sold. This is the kind of energy which really asks us to look at what is the nature of a soul contract. It may not be romantic. It may not be sexual. It can be completely different. Is this something you want to engage in or is it not? Is it something that will bring you into greater alignment or is it old karma, shiny new bottles? And some of you might even like the old bottles. So just be very, very aware of that kind of traction that draws you, that pulls you to other people in this time period. So this is what I wanted to share with you with this particular period. As I said, this would normally be a tier, a tier 23 level one analysis, but I felt this was important for everyone to know because this is the time where we're doing so much of heavy lifting. I mean, September as a whole is going to see a lot of energy shift, a lot of energy move. Remember, I did an art, uh, a video before on how it was going to be the most significant month um, of 2020 in, in a certain sense, in terms of how the directions are actually going to be changing of several key planets and so on and so forth. So there's much moving, there is much shifting. This is not the time to relax. We still need to keep, and in an even-handed way, keep focused on the lessons that we have learned and to keep moving through with the level of consciousness 
that feels true to us, that helps us manifest the reality that is in true alignment with the heart. You don't need a title. You don't need a religion. You don't need a path with a capital P. You don't need a truth with a capital T. You don't need any of that. You already know the way home. That's about it. So this is where all of us are putting our feet forward to go back to that space of home one step at a time. And now, having finished that, <laughs> now I'm going to go look at the comments. All right, so there's quite a few of it. Let's get to it. Okay, hello, Osset. Hello, 305 Capricorn. Hello, Coco Monday. Hello, Erin. Hello, Brandon. Hello, Kavia. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Ginger Snaps. Hello, Fiorella. Hello, Illuminated Vibe. Hello, Jesse. Hello, Sunshine. Hello, Norris. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Overflow. Hello, Circuit Lanes. Hello, Sky Blue. Hello, Dragon Ascension. Hello, Michelle Cook Hill. Hello, Jane Lane. Hello, VB. Hello, Rani. Hello, the Humane Human. I like your name. Hello, Armani Divine. Hello, Kavita Bagiam. Hello, Soma. Hello, Jolene. Hello, Sabina. Um, ah, Sabina, just send me an email. Um, okay, hello, Celine. Feeling a lot of raw, unprocessed emotion in the energy here of late. I've been following what's been happening in the US and, of course, Portland. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Hello, Nina. Hello, uh, hello, Sharon. Hello, the Art of Belly Dance. Hello, Dora. Hello, Nacha Libre. Um, hello, Marissa. Oh, nice to see you. It's been a while since I've seen you. Hello, Mystic. Hello, Vera. Um, here we go. Oh, okay. Celine says, my gut might have saved lives this weekend. Decided last minute not to take my child and his cousin swimming at a lake. Oh, a child was killed by a boat at the lake that day. That is, I'm glad your child is safe. Please send him my regards. Um, and I hope he's doing the meditation that we talked about. And uh, I'm just glad that everyone is safe. Hello, whole soul drumming. Hello, Di Dawson. Oh, hello, friend. Hello, John Philip. Which asteroid is the false light? Well, different people see it differently, but I would say it's Borassisi, B-O-R-A-S-I-S-I. -S -I. Hello, Seth and True. Hello, Devana. Hello, Roses and Bees. Hello, Jewel. Hello, Tamika. I think I got everybody. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Hello, Sheena. <laughs> so information helps. It's a lot to take in. I know you're probably going to have to play it again several times. Hello, Caroline. Yes, please watch it in, in rerun. I'm just about done here. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Take care. Very many things. Be as kind as, your, as you can to yourself and to others, but no bullshit. Lots of love to all. Cha-cha for now. Bye-bye.